I've got the first elevator in the pink uh, marked out where my stitches go and I put the reinforcing tape on there and have that trimmed up so it's ready to poke holes in the new fabric and, and uh, stitch it up. The second elevator uh, I wound up, I put the fabric on the wrong side, the first uh, layer of fabric, I put it on the wrong side so I wound up ripping it off. I gotta clean it up and start over again on that one. But we'll get busy and start rib stitching this one. This elevator is rib stitched and I've got it laid out for the reinforcing tapes to go on top of the rib stitching and these there's some little uh, stringers that go on both ends and I'm gonna put one inch tape on those. Anyway I've got them all marked out for the the reinforcing tape on those uh, ribs uh, so I'm gonna get some prep saw now some acrylic clean and wash this down with acrylic clean and let it dry before I put the first layer of poly brush on here where the tapes go. Got the finishing tapes put over the reinforcing tapes on both sides of this uh, elevator. Uh, I run one inch tapes over these little, um, they're just small diameter wires, about eighth inch, that run from here to there and then from the corners up there on the other end and then two inch ones here on the rest of them. Now these I've left long. I'll go ahead and trim those off after everything sets up with the razor. The ones on the other side I trimmed those up to fit. Uh, there's a, the seam here that runs down uh, here on the on the forward spar and around the trailing edge that comes in there. I run those up and fitted those into that seam. The next step is to flip it over onto the other side which will be the bottom and start punching holes in the fabric again and putting the seaplane grommets in there. Get the finishing tapes applied to both sides of the elevator, um, or at least the ones that go in the field here, the ones that go over the ribs. Of course I don't have them yet around the outside edge, the trailing edge, or that uh, forward spar. I'm going to wait to do those till I get finished with uh, some, a couple other things. The main thing I've got to do now is heat up the soldering iron and punch the holes in here for the seaplane drains for the grommets. Uh, I went and looked at the old elevator to see uh, how some of the things were laid out on it. and This one's actually going to wind up being better than it, I think, and nicer than it. But anyway, I looked at the trailing edge and could see where the uh, corrosion rust stains and stuff were on the trailing edge. And we had one seaplane grommet in each one of these bays, like one here and one here and so on but uh, this thing sits in this trailing edge is down low so the moisture builds up along this trailing edge uh, any moisture that builds up in there I don't know whether moisture gets in through the seaplane grommets maybe but uh, anyway I decided to put these uh, we'll put these right here this rib runs down this way and this intersection is right here between this trailing edge and this rib so I'll put one secret plain grommet there because moisture will run down this way and hopefully come out that and then this bay here has kind of got an arc to it and this trailing point of the trailing edge is actually lower than either one of these intersections now if I would have followed the pattern I made on the elevator or the horizontal stabilizer I'd have put one here and one here uh, on each side next to the rib on each one of these bays but I'm gonna center this one in this bay right here because this is the low point and that's where the moisture collects on that and then on each one of these other ones it, it, again it runs down from this one down to this point so if I put one right here on the uphill side of this rib right here I think that would be the best spot and the same the rest of the way around I'm getting this elevator shaped up. I got my seaplane grommets put on there. And again, they were right down next to the, this is a 3 8 inch um, tube that goes around here on this trailing edge. And I put the holes as close to that 3 8 inch edge uh, tube as I could get. They were almost right on it. I had to pull them back a little bit to get this uh, seaplane grommet so it doesn't overhang over that. And, uh, and I've got my doilies over the top of that. So I've got all those on there. Uh, I like the way they are. This, they're all at the low points of these bays. I took this last rib 
and all the ribs over the top of the reinforcing tape I've got two inch finishing tape on that and this last one I run the two inch tape all the way out to the end of the rib out here and then I trimmed it around where this bar comes in where this rib meets this spar here and uh, then I took the bottom and I folded it over with the iron and uh, glued it down but I took the iron uh, after I folded it over I turned it up to 350 degrees and then I just came along this edge right here and, and shrunk that so that it tapers so I didn't have to cut that finishing tape um, I run that and then I, it, out here towards the end I had to shrink it up here on top a little bit too to get it to shrink enough to to uh, fit and I did the same thing on the top side I just folded that over on overlapping that uh, bottom tape and when I got out here uh, to where it started, you, I don't know whether you can see that or not, you can see the pinking edge there, but it, where it come out and started intercepting this uh, taper on this rib, I just started shrinking it down until I got it down to match up with the taper on that uh, rib. Now I'm laying out the finishing tape for this uh, forward spar, and that's going to have to be uh, two pieces of tape I could use one piece of four inch tape but then I'd have to have some kind of a funky joint right here and put a piece of two inch tape or something out here on this end where this spar extends out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of three inch tape I've got it measured out about an inch and three quarters not quite two inches and I'm going to put my piece of three inch tape here so that'll overlap down here uh, an inch past this leading edge and uh, then when it comes down I'll cut right here where this uh, rib and this spar intersect and I fold part of it down and then just bring that piece out as a continuous piece out here uh, to this end of this uh, trailing edge and then that'll be covered over with a piece of uh, bias tape, 4 inch tape. So that's the next step. I've got this all laid out. Uh, I'll put the three inch tape on this side and then I think I'll shrink it so my seam winds up being here somewhere um, in the line, the hinge line of this uh, spar so it doesn't show. This elevator is coming along I just, I've got the finishing tape here on the spar, on the leading edge spar, or the main spar for the elevator. I've been looking at the old elevator for inspiration or for guidance on how to do this some cases how not to do this and we redid the uh, other elevators about uh, 10 years ago we had to take the fabric off and do some repairs on them for the rust and stuff and I sandblasted them, cleaned them up and we recovered them then and that's when my friends uh, mechanics came up and showed me how to do the fabric work and they did most of the fabric work on it but we redid the elevators the rudder and the horizontal stabilizers at that time so anyway, I've, I've been looking at those for guidance on how to do this on this leading edge section here. On the other elevator, the seam between the two fabric halves, the bottom and the top, the seam was on the bottom and it was only maybe a half inch or less. It run right along this spar right here, pretty close. And we used uh, two pieces of two inch tape to uh, finishing tape over this spar and the one piece uh, of course covered over that seam and, and then they, uh, it went up and wrapped around this uh, spar a little ways and then the second piece cut, went over the other side and come back and they lay lapped here and then that was cut off right here where this uh, main rib, this long rib comes out and another piece was made it in there and there was a, a joint uh, or seam it just two butted two pieces of tape up together right there and it looked kind of funky I put these skins on with a one inch overlap which was quite a bit more than the other one and that's what uh, is required in the uh, 4313 and the, in the polyfiber manual so a two inch tape wouldn't have covered that um, well, I guess you could have but it would have just barely covered it and I didn't like not having that much uh, coverage over that actually the tape would have come down to the front of the leading edge and then back here just a little ways past this seam. Um, so on the bottom side here I took a piece of three inch tape and I divided it in half here along where this extension, this spark extends out here to the outer edge, the uh, 
and I put an inch and a half on either side of that and then made my line that distance all the way down here and, and made it that tape up to that line, glued it down, and then to avoid the three inch tape coming all the way around here and making a seam somewhere up in here, I was hoping I could get it somewhere along this hinge line here on the front edge of this spar. Uh, though I took the iron and heated it up and shrunk this uh, tape and got it back. Well, it came back here to where it's just, the, just right almost at the top center line of this spar. But that's okay, it's not out here in the middle somewhere. Uh, anyway, so that looks pretty good. I've got plenty of, of coverage. I've got a, a, an inch, almost an inch overlap here. You only need three-eighths of an inch according to the, the book, but some is good, more is better. Anyway, that looks pretty good. I've got a nice tight fit here on this uh, leading edge of the spar. And then on this side, I just took a piece of two-inch tape, and I did the same thing with the two-inch tape. Um, I measured an inch on either side of this uh, main spar where it goes through past this rib and then lined it up along that and laid out my tape here and then uh, that overlaps this three inch tape and that seam comes right in here on the inside of this spar where it won't show up hardly at all once this uh, once this uh, elevator is mounted it'll mount like this and this will be the hinge line here so these tapes won't hardly show up. We'll have this seam right here. Now I could have cut that off with, an, with the scissors and cut it off back down here somewhere. And it might have been better. It would have been farther inside of that uh, hinge line. And it wouldn't have showed up. Maybe a straight line wouldn't have showed up as much as this uh, uh, pinked edge of that tape. But it is what it is. And it actually doesn't look too bad. I, I think it'll be fine. So the next step now is to do this trailing edge and I've got to come over on this back side that's going to be a little bit more complicated than I would originally thought or hoped. I've got to come over on this back side to, to uh, overlap this uh, seam a little ways like we did on the top and then I've got to come over these, fit it over these uh, seaplane grommets so maybe I should have waited to put these seaplane grommets on until after I had that trailing edge tape on. These uh, doilies here kind of roll over that trailing edge a little bit and that's kind of a soft spot, sore spot right there. It could become a sore spot so having that tape come over this will cover that up and help hold it down even more. I could have put these on, these uh, seaplane grommets on without using these doilies on here because it's just going to be covered over with this finishing tape anyway but like I said if some is good more is better. Now the problem I've got here is this is a pretty good curve going around there. I could use straight tape for that but I'd have to heat form it around here. And I've got the bias tape Now before we use the the three inch bias tape around there but my seam on that was right here on this metal on this trailing edge. It didn't have an overlap hardly at all so the three inch covered over that seam but here I've got the one inch seam on there so the three inch tape once it's pulled uh, around it shrinks down to two inches well that's not enough to to cover this so I'm going to use the four inch tape I have to divide it so that uh, I put more of that tape on this bottom side than I put on the top side so it'll be off center problem we've got with the bias tape is it only is seven feet long between these seams, the seams stitched in there. So I've laid this out and I run out if I cut this seam off right here and put that on one edge or the other and pull it around then I run into my second seam before I get all the way around it. So I'm going to have to figure out where to to lay out a splice there, a joint there. And when I originally put this tape on this uh, spar, I, I went ahead and glued it down all the way around here, all the way down to this end. I was just going to run this uh, trailing edge tape up and made it up against it right here, or lap it over a little bit and cut it off. But I got to thinking about that and thought it might be better if I went ahead and, and run this seam for this trailing edge tape up to here 
and then gone ahead and covered it with this leading edge tape here and that way this seam is covered up. Well they got this tape around the trailing edge here and it was kind of a pain but it went okay. I started out down at the end down there where the bell crank is and glued on about uh, three or four inches of that, stretched it out, pulled it tight to get it to the, sh uh, the size, glued it down and then held it down until it uh, stuck and then just went about six, eight inches at a time all the way around there and uh, got it on. Said it was kind of a pain getting it to follow the line and stuff. I drew a, a line two and a quarter inches from the uh, edges or one edge not quite on center because I wanted it to hang over on this uh, lower side more than the upper side and it come out just about right it come out just almost exactly an inch and a half coming around this uh, big corner here this sharp corner here uh, the first portion of it went okay and then as I got down farther around here it, it become more difficult I got a couple little wrinkles in here I think we'll iron out and a couple down in here I finally got them worked out but the uh, of course, some of those wrinkles are, are uh, from this thing being on the roll over these uh, this row of stitching, so that had some wrinkles or some forms formed into the tape. But anyway, it looks pretty good. I got it on there pretty smooth all the way around. Well, real smooth all the way around, and and it just about perfect on this line here until right here on this lower edge right here, and then it's off just a little bit here, but uh, not bad at all. So that's pretty good and I wound up, I was worrying about having to make a seam on that, a joint on that with two pieces, but by I cut this piece off right as close to the edge of this seam as I could on the other end and then I cut myself off uh, six inches or so for a handle on this end and then laid it out um, on there and by stretching it uh, I got you can see I got about six inches or so extra on there, five and a half, six inches of, on there. So that was just uh, from pulling it and stretching it and getting it all the way around there. Now I have to form that around those grommets, those seaplane grommets. They might be kind of a pain. They, they don't want to lay down around those. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do around there yet. I did cut um, a relief on the one edge of these where they open up and uh, tried to get it to lay down there and I tried to get it around these other sides here but uh, it just wasn't having any of it but I may have better luck now that I've got it all down and don't have to fight with the rest of it there Con, I'll wait till this this uh, poly brush cures real well first and I left pl plenty on here I went ahead and brushed out some down here with the poly brush so I can cut this without uh, it fraying and I think what I'm going to do is is go ahead and just fold this over this edge right here um, and glue that in on that edge and then fold it back over um, from the top down in uh, that way that'll make a nice uh, finish on that end uh, it won't be just a, a cut off edge right here like uh, I was originally thinking it was going to be there's one elevator in the pink get all of the tapes on it and stuff and, uh, cleaned up it's ready to hang up of course like everything else it'll still need to be sprayed one coat of poly brush and then the poly spray on top. So I get uh, the other one down here. I kind of fell behind on it. Stuck it out of the way and I was uh, working on taxes so that's what I was doing between working on the one elevator and then run the taxes and then come back and do the other one, that one again. I kind of set this one aside and didn't get to it. Oh, well, it's ready to be shaped. The first uh, skin, the first side's ready to be shaped up and glued down. We'll get started on that.